Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. Unfortunately, the first clip of my process did not record quite as I would have liked it to. It's so blurry that I have decided that it's probably better for me not to <laughs> include it in this week's video because it's really not that great to look at. <laughs> And honestly, it might make some of you sick. So I am deciding to start with my first layer as the beginning of my video. Uh, so the background is very plain and uh, well, it's bright, <laughs> but it's very plain. There's a, a few little marks by the salt, uh, but not anything crazy. And when I first looked at the background, I wasn't overly sure what to do with it. I had sort of had an idea of what I wanted to do with these colors before I even started the process. And that sort of fell by the wayside when I saw it after it dried. And my intuition kicked in and said, no, that's definitely not what you're gonna do. So instead, what I decided to do is create a piece of neurographic art and I'm creating it mostly using watercolors this time. I will be using some pen work to add just a few little details towards the end of my process, but the bulk of this process is created with watercolors. I think it's a very easy painting and I think beginners will love this type of um, project because there's nothing complicated about it. And I love neurographic art because it's so relaxing and it really takes all the guesswork out of creating art. I hope you will join me, whether you choose to bring an, a background from your archives that you've never done anything with, that you didn't really know what to do with it, maybe this will give you some ideas. Or if you just wanna start from scratch, create a very plain background and then build from there, I would love for you to join me and see what we can create together. So grab your paint supplies or a cup of tea if you'd prefer and either watch me paint or come paint with me. The coarse grain salt did leave some interesting marks, but the uh, fine grain salt didn't do a whole lot. And I think this is because the opera pink that I was using is a granulating color and it doesn't tend to react the same way with salt as other paints do. Nonetheless, um, this background is interesting, a little bit interesting, <laughs> I think mostly because of its colors, but it's still pretty plain. So I'm coming in with my round brush and I'm adding some lines, much like I would do usually with my pens when I'm starting a neurographic art piece, but this time I'm creating those lines using my brush and I'm really wanting to work mostly with watercolors for this project. And so I'm creating, I created this light wash of turquoise and I'm coming in to add the lines. What I like about creating a light wash like this is that, that it just glazes the paper so you can still see what's underneath those lines. And if I wanted to leave it that way, it could still be interesting, but I'm gonna keep building on my marks in this painting. And I'm starting by adding these wavy lines and then I'm going to come in exactly like I would the way I do neurographic art and I'm going to round off the areas where the lines are intersecting and creating some sharp corners. If you're new to neurographic art and you're not quite sure what I mean when I say I'm rounding the areas where the lines intersect, um, I'm going to include some links in my video description for some videos that I've created in the past where I explain my process of creating neurographic art in a more detailed manner. In this video, I'm just going to work on creating the artwork and hopefully most of it, or most of what I'm doing will be self-explanatory, but I would like to invite you if, again, you have more questions about neurographic art, 
to watch the videos I've created in the past. I think they'll answer a lot of your questions. And of course, if any question is left unanswered, please don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to hear from you. Here I'm continuing to work with another light wash of blue to add some shapes within the shapes that have been left by the lines. When I say I'm working with a light wash of color, I simply mean I'm working with some watercolor that is fairly watered down. So there's quite a bit of water in the paint and that means that when I apply it over uh, a background such as this one, it'll still be possible to see what's going on underneath the paint.
this tool I'm holding in my left hand is called a ruling pen and it's absolutely not necessary <laughs> to create this painting. So if you're a beginner and all you have to work with is watercolor brushes, you are good to go. You do not need this. But I bought mine a while ago. I used it for the first time not so long ago and I actually enjoyed working with it. So I decided to pull it out again and to keep practicing using this tool because it's still very new to me. And I was hoping or expecting that when I added <laughs> it, to, uh, the color to my paper at this point, that the ruling pen would create a much finer line, kind of like what it's doing right now. Uh, but the first bit of paint that was added on the painting was a little bit more blobby, <laughs> for lack of a better word, than I was hoping. But that's okay. I'm I'm learning how to use this tool still, so I'm not going to be too hard on myself. It uh, It's what happened, and so I'm just going to go with it. And I hope when it happens in your uh, <laughs> project that you can choose to embrace what's happening and try to make it work. And that's really the best thing to do. So I'm adding some more darker paint within the shapes that I've created in my painting. There's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, but I do want to create some more dark value contrast. And that means I all of my colors before adding this indigo were relatively light in value and I want to add a little bit more drama to what I'm painting so I want to darken things up so that there really is a contrast between all the different marks and shapes that I'm putting in my painting. So I'm working with my brush and I'm working with my ruling pen trying to get more familiar with the ruling pen. You'll see that what one of the things that you can do with watercolors is that you can actually pick up paint. <laughs> so when there's a lot of paint on the paper, I can actually come in with a brush that's got relatively little water in it and it will absorb some of the paint that's on the paper. And that's one of the things I love about watercolor too is there is some flexibility when working with this medium. So if you're new to watercolors and you do not have a ruling pen, a fine tip brush will do just as well, if not better, <laughs> than my ruling pen. <laughs> I am struggling a little bit with leaving the types of lines I want to leave, but I'm really, like I said, embracing what's happening and I'm going to make it work. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to adding value contrast is that if you want to have a dark color and you want to keep it dark over the rest of your colors in your painting, it's good to not add too much water. So you're going to start leaving your paint a little bit more pigmented so that the color is less transparent and this will help to build your values in your painting.
Now I'm coming in with my pens and I'm going to start to add just a few tiny details to add a little bit more value contrast in my painting. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I really want to mainly be creating with my watercolors. And so I'm going to keep the details that I add with my pens to a minimum. Using very dark or very light colors are a great way to add contrast in terms of value. Another way of adding contrast in a painting is by using iridescent colors as opposed to using the matte colors that are in the background. So I'm coming in right now with my pearl blue and I'm adding some of this paint here and there in the painting. It's going to add a little bit of a light value contrast because when it catches the light a certain way, it does seem to have an opaque um, lightness to it, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better way of, of saying it. But then when it catches the light in other ways, it'll shimmer and... Um, I don't know, it adds a little something special to a painting. So I love to work with this color. You don't have to work with this color. If you're a beginner and you don't have iridescent paints in your palette, using a white at this point in time would probably have really nice effects. It would contrast very nicely with the medium values in the painting and the dark values in the painting um, and really stand out. So white would be another really great option at this point. One thing to take note of with white watercolor is that it doesn't tend to cover very well. And so if I was coming in and adding white to my painting right now, I probably would prefer to do so using some gesso or some gouache uh, because they will be more opaque and have more of an impact than using white watercolor. White watercolor is something I do use, but it's not something I use very frequently. I would tend to use it mostly if I was trying to create very light highlights in a painting, uh, but if I wanted to have something with a lot of uh, value contrast, I would definitely go with something more opaque.
this rutile blue pearl that I'm working with right now is not only an iridescent color, it's also an interference color. So that means when I paint with it over a dark color, it tends to be much more noticeable. So if I was painting over black paper right now, you could see it much more easily. And if I work over lighter colors like I am right this instant, it's not going to be nearly as visible because they are semi-transparent or more like translucent and when you will notice them is when they catch the light in a certain way and they do have a very special quality to them because of that and I love adding them to paintings because they're not always noticeable yet when the light catches them a certain way they really do add something to the painting. For a little additional iridescent color contrast, I've decided to also add some of my Magic Green. And this will also add some visual interest, mostly when it catches the light. It is slightly more visible, I find, than the Blue Pearl. And so it's, it's a great color to add in this painting because there are blues, there are greens, and I think these two iridescent paints in particular will look really nice. As I'm continuing to paint, I'm also starting to feel like maybe adding some gold would be a little bit more of a pop of color to this painting. And so I will do that next. I've decided to add a little bit of gold in this darker area here and as soon as I did it almost I got <laughs> an intuitive nudge saying nope that was not the right thing so I kept trying to add to it and it still wasn't working so I have kept this clip in the video because I want to show you that it's not impossible to fix something that you don't like. So in order to remove what I just put over the paint, I'm coming in with a clean, damp round brush and I'm sweeping over the gold paint that I added and I'm simply removing it. So I keep cleaning my brush on my paper towel as I go along and once I've removed most of it, I can just come back in with that dark color of paint and fix that and it will hardly even be noticeable that I even had added the gold on top of it. So there's a lot of flexibility when working with watercolors or with just about any art medium. We just need to remember that nothing is ever <laughs> impossible to fix. Paint is magical that way. And with that final little touch of cover-up paint, I'm ready to call this painting done and I'm super excited to show you how these iridescent paints really stand out when they catch the light.
I'm really loving how this little painting turned out and oh my goodness when these iridescent paints catch the light it just adds even more wow to the painting. I think it just goes to show that a relatively plain and simple background can be developed into something far more interesting and beautiful to look at. You can hardly see the iridescent blue most of the time and then at one point when it catches the light set against that yellow background it's just magical. Neurographic art always leaves me satisfied. It's relaxing, it's fun, and it was exactly what I needed today. I hope you enjoyed watching my process unfold and mostly I hope you're feeling inspired to pick up your paint supplies and get painting. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!